Last year during Canada Learning Code Week, um, there was a great activity with the Canadarm 2 um, where you got to program it to do some pretty cool stuff. And I was hoping to do that activity this year with my grade 4 class and I got to the page that talks a little bit about how you do it and some of those links aren't working anymore. So what I thought I'd do is make a YouTube video that helps to explain how you can still use the starter the initial starter to program the Canada arm. So what we're hoping to do in the end is have a Canada arm that moves with the keyboard arrows and that can pick up these different shapes and move them into the correct ports. So here it wouldn't let me place it in the wrong port, but instead would let me place it in the correct shape port, just like that. So that's what we're aiming for. So here's how you do it. Here's the starter. We're going to go ahead and say C inside. If you're logged into Scratch, then it'll automatically make a copy of this for you and let you open it in your Scratch account. Right now, you can see we have a whole bunch of different sprites. We've got one for the Canada arm, and then each of these different items has their own sprite, and then each of these ports as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off um, by placing each of our items in an initial start position. And we're going to do that by um, when we press the flag. So there's an event. We're going to go here and we're going to say whenever we press the flag, that means we want to start our game and we want everything to move into their initial positions. So we need to decide where do we want our Canada arm to start and each of these shapes. So I'm going to move my Canada arm into a position that I think looks good. You'll notice as I drag it around the screen down here, the X and Y values are changing and that's showing me the position of my Canada arm. Just like in graph coordinates in math, um, you've got an X position that moves left to right and a Y position that moves up and down. The higher you go um, up and down, the higher the Y number, and then below a certain point those numbers become negative integers. So we're going to set a start position for all of these different sprites. Each sprite has its own set of scripts. So we're going to say when we start we want our Canada arm, I'm going to place it where I like it to be, and I'm going to go under motion, and I'm going to say we want to um, we want our thing to go to, and by default it has some numbers here, 68 and negative 30. Those are the positions of where the Canada arm is currently. Watch, I'll move it out of place, push the flag, and it'll pop right back there. So we can do the same thing for each of these items. So I'll go ahead and click on my uh, pentagon, and I'll give it a start position. And again, I'll say when the flag is clicked. So you can see now we're working on scripts that belong to this pentagon. Here's the script that belongs to the arm. And back to the pentagon. So when we press that, we want it to motion, go to position. And now it has the position X equaling 192 and Y equaling 115. And it's got that just because that's where we drag this. So let's test out our script again. I'm going to push the flag. And you can see it pops our arm back here and it pops the pentagon up here. I'm going to say, um, hopefully you've been following along with the video, pause it now and see if you can do the same thing for the triangle and the circle, dragging them to positions and then getting um, uh, when flag is pressed script. All right, so pause it and give it a try on your own. All right, you've unpaused it. Let's see if you do it the same way I did. So I'm going to say when this is pressed. I want it to go to this position. Let's test it. And same for our circle. Actually, I'll show you a little cheat. If I go here onto my triangle, I can literally pick this up and drag it onto my circle. And then I already have the code. We just need to decide where should we move the circle to. So I'll maybe I'll say over here, 106 and 100. All right, so they should all move into their start positions when we push the flag, just like that. Now, the objective of the game is to use the arm to move around, pick up these items, and then deliver them to the correct port down here on the left. So we need to set some stuff up to give our arm the ability to move. So I'm going to go back to my arm, click that in the sprites here. Under scripts, we have different types of events. If you have a look down here, there's one for different types of key presses. And you can see it says when space key is pressed. We're going to drag that one over. And we're going to click there 
and we get a whole bunch of different choices. Up arrow, down arrow, right, and left. I'm going to start with my up arrow. So a second ago I mentioned that as we move up, we're, our Y number is increasing, and as we move down, our Y number is decreasing. You can see that happening right here when I move my mouse. Check it out. When it goes up, increases, down, decreases. So we're going to go under motion, and we're going to say we want to change. We don't want to set the Y value. We want to change our Y value. And I'm going to just use 10. That's the default. Okay, so let's see what happens if I push up. There we go. It's moving up. If I push down, though, nothing happens. So we want to do the same thing there. We're going to say events, and we'll say when the down arrow is pressed. We want to go into motion again and change Y by... If I had it go up by 10 to bring it down the opposite direction, I need to not add numbers but subtract them. So I'm going to say change it by negative 10 to come down. Let's test it. Push our flag. Up goes up and down goes down. All right. Now let's make it move left and right. Back into control. Oh, sorry. Back into events. And we'll say when the... left arrow is pressed. We're going to change X instead of Y this time. X is our left and right axis. You can see if you're never sure which direction is neg negative and which is positive, just put your mouse on the screen and move your mouse to the left. And if you can see it's decreasing, then we need to subtract X. And when you move right, it's increasing. That means you need to add. So I'm going to go under change X by and I'm going to change it by. I want it to move left, so I'm going to change it by negative 10. And I'll leave that last one up to you. Pause the video and give it a try. Okay, so when the right arrow is pressed, I want to change my x by, sorry, change my x by 10. So let's test it. Right, left, up, down. All right, cool. You can see my item has different costumes. If I click here on costumes, I can see it has a closed and open costume. <coughs> my closed claw is costume number one, and my open costume is number two. I'm going to go back to my scripts now. And we're going to set a few other things to happen when we start our script. We are going to go to our costumes. Sorry. We're going to go under looks and say we want our costume always, we want our claw to be open when it starts. So I say switch costume to Canada arm open. So let's try that. Push the flag, moves into space, and it has an open. Now we're going to set up another event and we're going to say whenever we push that space bar, we want our claw to, if it's open, we want it to close, and if it's closed, we want it to open. We want to move our arm to one of these items, close the claw so it grabs it, move it to where it needs to go, and then open it to drop it into the correct port. So I'm going to say when the space key is pressed, that's what we'll use, we want it to, if it's closed, we want it to open, and if it's open, we want it to close. So here's how we can do that. There's a really easy way to do that, and that's just to have it switch the costume. So if I go here under looks, I can say switch my costume, oops, sorry, just next costume rather. So watch, when I hit space, it just keeps changing. And that's fine, except for we need to actually have the computer program remember whether or not the claw is open or closed. So we're going to have to make it a little more complicated than that. I'm just going to take that next costume item off and throw it away. So we're going to talk a little bit about controls here. A control is something that can check to see if something is true or false and then make a decision based on that. So we're going to grab this little block here. This is our if then else block. So we're going to check to see <coughs> we're going to check to see if our arm is open then it's going to close and if it's closed then it's going to open. So here's how we do that. If I look under looks here, you can see that it can remember what costume number you're using. 
And remember, if I look under here, open is costume number two and closed is costume number one. So we can say if, and you can see this has a diamond shape. That lets us go and choose operators. So we can go here and say if something is equal to something, then do whatever's in here. Otherwise, else do what's in here. So we want to check to see about our, our costume, which one we're using. So we want to say if our costume number equals costume number two, then we know it's open. So if it's open, we want it to close. So we'll say switch costume to closed. Otherwise, if it's not co on costume two, it must be on costume one. There, therefore, we want it to open. So I know that's a little more code than what we just talked about with the next costume, but you'll see why we're going to do that in a second. So let's test it out. Push our flag, opening and closing. Incidentally, if I check this box down here under costume number, we can see which costume number it's currently using. I can see there's costume one and there's costume two. All right, now we're gonna write some code, more code for our shapes here. They're gonna listen for the arm and <clears throat> check to see if it's closed. If it's closed, then we want our shape to follow along like this. So here's one I've completed. So if I go up here and grab this pentagon, when I push the spacebar, I want it to be able to grab it, and that costume, or sorry, that pentagon follows the arm as I move it around. So we want that to happen. So I'm going to go back to my code here, and we need it to listen for something. We need to listen for the claw closing. So I'm going to go back to my arm. In addition to changing our costume here, we're going to broadcast something. A broadcast is a type of event that the other sprites in our code can listen for. So we're going to say we're going to send a message. We'll send send message one, broadcast message one, when it's closed. But instead of saying message one, let's have it say closed. And then similarly, we're going to broadcast a message for when our arm is open so that the other sprites know that it's open. So we'll say new message, open. So if I run my program again, you can see that it's changing costumes and it's broadcasting a message, but it's not the sort of message we can see here on our stage. It is one, however, that our other costumes, our other sprites rather, can listen for. So we can say, when I receive closed, we want something to happen. We want it to, to check to see if the arm is touching it. And if it is, when it closes, then it's going to grab onto the Pentagon. So. I'll say, when I receive closed, we're going to check to see if they're touching. So here's how we do that. If something happens, then all this stuff in the box. So we'll say, if, we can go under sensing here, we can say, we can check to see if this pentagon is touching lots of different stuff. The mouse pointer, if it's touching the color blue, all that kind of stuff. But we'll say, if it's touching, not the mouse pointer, but the arm, then we want to we want something to happen. We're going to create a loop inside here that will keep running for as long as it's touching the arm. So under controls, we're going to create a for a forever loop. A forever loop literally runs forever or until we tell it to stop. So we'll say if it's touching the arm, then create a loop that runs forever where we're going to have it move to the same location as the arm. And we can just choose here, where is it? go to arm. So it'll go to the same location that the arm is at. So let's try our program. I'm going to move my arm around over here to the Pentagon. I'm going to push the close button. Oh, and you can see this piece of code just lit up here telling me that it is, um, that it heard the broadcast message closed. And now our if and forever loop are running where it knows that it's touching the arm, and whenever we move, we want it to move with the arm. <clears throat> I'm going to go down here and push space again to open my claw, but you'll see it keeps following me. So we need to create some other conditions. We need to listen out for the claw opening, that broadcast message, and then we need to check to see if 
our pentagon is touching the pentagon port and if it is then it needs to stay there in the port so let's stop our program we'll push the flag to put everything back to its normal starting state and again we're going to check for an event and that event is when it receives the message open so when it receives the message open we want to check to see if it's touching this port under controls we'll say if And under sensing, we'll check if it's touching the Pentagon port. Then we need something to happen. That first thing that's going to happen is that we're going to make sure it goes directly into the port. So we'll go under motion and we'll say go to Pentagon port. Now this part isn't necessary for sure. It's just to make sure that it sits right and nicely into the port. So we could leave that out, but we're going to leave it in. And the other thing is we want this loop to stop running. So under controls, we can stop other loops from running by throwing this in. And we'll say stop other scripts in Sprite. So this one will stop running. Actually, I'll leave that out for a second just to show you what's going to happen. So here we go. We're going to run our program. I'm going to move my cannon arm up grab onto the pentagon with a space bar, move it down, and you can see our closed um, bro broadcast message was heard, and this is running just like before. Now I'm going to go here and push space. Watch, it'll receive open, but it's still following my arm. Okay, now actually I'm going to go back to my arm, and I'm going to check. Yeah. Okay, cool. We need to stop that from happening. So I'm going to go here under my Pentagon, and I'm going to stop the other script from running. And now we'll start it again. So stop and run. Let's see if it works this time. It should. Now, whenever we program, sometimes we run into problems. So we'll see what happens here. There we go. It's moving. I'm going to move it down to the port. Push space. And look, it stayed. It worked. So it stayed behind. That's great. Well, now we need to do the same thing for our circle and our triangle. Okay, so we're almost done. Now, actually, this is the part where it gets a little easier because we can use some of this same logic to do the programming for our circle and our triangle. So if you want to try that on your own, pause the video here and refer back to your code for your pentagon to try and make your circle work. Okay, it's going to be almost the same code with a few changes. I'll show you how to do that now. So if you want to do that on your own, pause the video and work on your own. All right. So we want almost the same code. We're going to say, when I receive, that's an event. When I receive closed, we want to check under control if it's touching the arm. If it is, we're going to create a, a loop that runs forever or until we tell it to stop where it's going to move to the position of the arm. Now, as I said, you might want to jump back to your other one and see what else did I do in that code. No, that's it. So that works. And then we need to write a similar one for if it's touching the the circle port instead of the pentagon port. So we'll say control and we'll check for, oops, sorry, it's an event, I'm sorry. When I receive open under control, we'll say if it's touching the circle port. Oops, make sure it jumps right in there. If it's touching the circle port, then we want to have it move to the same position as the circle point port. So move to the circle port. And also, we want to stop the other script from running. So under controls, we'll say stop, but not stop all. Be careful not to choose that one. We want to stop other scripts in Sprite. Let's test it. Here we go. Go up to the circle, push my spacebar. It's following along with my arm. 
go down to the circle port, push the space bar, and there it is, perfect. It looks amazing. We can use this same logic for the triangle. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of a cheat now. I'm gonna grab this piece of code. You can see I've clicked here on my circle. I'm gonna pick this up and drop it on my triangle. You don't see anything happen, but when I click here on my triangle now, you can see there's my code. It's, it's over here. So if it's touching the arm, forever go to the arm. Just the same as this. We're gonna grab this code and do the same thing drop it on the triangle, we have to make one change to that. So when it receives open, we wanna to check to see, not if it's touching the circle port, but if it's touching the triangle port. And here, go to, not the circle port, but the triangle port. And then we have a game that works. So, grab our triangle and move it into the triangle port. Oh, there we go, there you have it success.